Hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Fury News Tile app. Um, so I'm not sure if any of you are aware, but um, with the new version of the UI 5 Launchpad, you can now have access to this quite nice um, news tile, which you can point at any RSS feed and get it to display, you know, any of the new uh, news stories that you might want to show off. Um, just to have a nice little rolling tile, live tile on the user's launchpad. Now, that's all well and good, but unfortunately, as part of that, you can also fall victim to the cross-domain origin policy, which, not going into it in too much detail, but essentially what you end up with is, if you're talking to this server, which is our uh, SAP NetWeaver Gateway server, serving up our Fury launchpad, and our RSS feed is coming from another server, off in another realm in the internet, then one cannot talk to the other. One is not allowed. Uh, purely from a security perspective, that if you're communicating with server A, and suddenly, as part of communication with server A, you communicate with server B, there's a little bit of a security risk on that one. It's called cross-domain uh, origin policy. So what we try to do at all times is keep all of our origins the same. So if I'm asking for data, I'm always asking my gateway server for my data. Now there are other ways around this, and this is just one way of getting around this cross-domain origin issue. But let me show it to you first. So I've got uh, my RSS feed, which is just a very simple RSS feed. It's just returning just some uh, articles, actually, from the Bluefin website. Now I want to show that off uh, on this tile here. Now if I go into my configuration and I say, OK, for this particular tile, I want to point to the Bluefin Solutions RSS feed. So there we go, www.bluefinsolutions.com forward slash RSS. So I hit save on that, and it says, are you sure you want to save? And I say, yes, I do. And there we go. So now it's saved. And if I go back here and I reload my launch pad, it'll do its nice spinning flower, and nothing happens. Everything else on the page loads fine. You can see my timesheets app is loading my five days but I'm actually not getting any information on my articles. In fact, it's just saying no articles to display. If I go in and get some more information by going into the console of my browser, I can see, ah, okay, there we go. HTXML request cannot load bluefinsolutions.com. No access control allow origin header is present on the request. So therefore, access to my RSS feed has been denied. So the scenario I want to end up with is I want all of my data to be coming from the same place. So I want to talk to my gateway server, get my UI5 front end that you're seeing right now here, but I also want to get all of the data, whether it be my timesheets data or my RSS feed, to be coming from the same place. And I can do this. So what I've come up with is a nice little service within my SAP system. Because remember, Gateway is just an SAP system. You can write your own ABAP, app, you can create anything you want inside of it. So what I've created is a very simple uh, class uh, within my uh, system, which I've just called ZCL underscore RSS underscore reader. Now, this is all hard-coded. In an ideal world, I would put this stuff into a table and it would be nice and configurable um, so that we have a nice little reverse proxy going on for our internal RSS feeds. So essentially what I've done here within this RSS reader is I have implemented the interface IF HTTP extension. Now this is a great little interface if you want to be able to handle incoming HTTP requests. And as part of that you get a method which you can override called handle request. Nice and simple. Whenever your a request comes in you want to handle it. So that's what we're doing. The code behind this, which I will publish elsewhere and I'll put the link below the video, um, is very simple. All I'm saying is, okay, here is my URL that I want to go to, which is very simple, bluefinsolutions.com forward slash RSS. I'm creating a HTTP request object, which, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. And I'm creating a nice little string just to put any errors that have occurred into. So the first thing I do is I say, right, I want to create a new HTTP request passing in my URL and returning into that object I mentioned earlier, the HTTP request object. Assuming the creation of that object is successful, I then do two things, as you would imagine. I first of all send my request, nice and easy, and then I receive the response. Again, nice and easy. Assuming that's been successful, 
I now have data back from my request. So I simply set up my response and I say, okay, we're 200, we're good, we're okay. And I set my content type to be XML before finally setting the data. So I take the data from my response from my HTTP request, HTTP request and I send it back out to the person who's requested it from me. So that's quite easy. Uh, there's some error handling here, which I'll let you go through in your own leisure uh, where, when, I, when I post this. But essentially all we're doing is, no matter what request comes in, and we should be doing some error checking here, but no matter what request comes in, I'm just simply going to go off to my RSS feed, get the, the latest data from the feed, and send it back to the person who's requested it. Now that's the ABAP app side of things, which is nice and easy. But how do I actually get this exposed to the outside world so someone can actually request it? Again, it's actually quite easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the name of my class, because I'm going to need that later. And then I'm going to go off to the Internet Communication Framework, or SICKF as I call it. So I go into SICKF, which I'm sure quite a few of you are familiar with. And in here, what I've done is I've created a nice little node underneath my default host, which is, again, very simplistic. This is just to get it working. I've created a node under here, which essentially all it does is it has the handle of our class. So the class we created earlier, we're simply saying, whenever anybody requests this particular URL, go to this class and get it to handle it, which is nice and easy. So what we're saying is our hostname slash BFRSS will be handled by this class over here. And as we know from our code, that's simply going to reply with uh, the contents of the uh, Bluefin RSS feed. I've done some nice little logon data. I've made it match all of my existing logon procedures within my uh, SAP Fiori uh, launchpad. And that's essentially it. So what I can do now is I can come out and say, right, I now want to test this. So I take my URL, go back in into here, create myself a new tab. I'm going to come out of full screen mode so you can actually see it. Paste in my URL. So you just see it's slash BFRSS. Uh, let's see if it loads. We'll load that again. Off it goes. And there we go. So what we have now is the same Bluefin Solutions RSS feed we saw here at www.bluefinsolutions.com forward slash RSS. And now all we're doing here is the exact same feed but as you can see, it's coming from the correct origin or coming from, everything is coming from our gateway server. So that's good news for us because we can now copy this and we go back to our configuration of our tile. And I say, okay, back into my news tile and I say, I'm changing the feed location to the feed location of the feed on our server. So I can just paste that in there, hit save. It says, are you sure you want to save? I say, I, I am very sure. And now I go back into my launchpad and hit reload. And that's it. So now you can see it's changed from no articles to display. So now it says bringing board level reporting to the 21st century and various other elements of the RSS feed. So that's how you get the, uh, or one way at least, of getting the Bluefin uh, RSS feed into your launchpad if you so so wish, but in general this is one way of getting around the cross-origin policy issues when trying to put news feeds into your um, into your SAP Fury launchpad. Obviously, as I mentioned, this is just one way of doing it. There are many other ways of doing it, uh, but this this is one that, that that I used briefly just for something that I was working on. Hope that's been useful.